It's time for 2.4 histograms. Yet another type of graph. Should we review? What have we done? We've done broken line, we've done bar graphs, we've done the awful pictographs, and now we're doing histograms. So what's a histogram? It's actually another type of bar graph, but it's a little different. So it shows data organized into intervals of equal size. This is the important part that each of the the things that are graph it's an interval so for example in this particular uh, histogram right here this bit this first bar right here goes from 100 to 150 so any trees i guess we're talking about tree height here any trees that are between 100 and 150 centimeters get counted in right there so it's a range right it's an interval um what do you notice it's very different about this than typical bar graphs they're touching each other. It uses vertical bars, so no horizontal when you're doing um, histograms. And there's no gaps between them. Um, okay, they're touching each other. The only times the bars touched with uh, bar graphs is when it was a double or a triple, then in each category the bars would touch. But there was always a space between the different categories. But with histogram, there's no gaps between them. And it's used for continuous data. Okay, with the bar graphs, it was for discrete data, but for histogram, it's continuous. Now, do you remember what continuous data is? I was worried you might forget, so I'll review with you. Continuous data is when intermediate values are possible, fractions are possible, decimals are possible. It's data or values that you measure, right? When you get tree height, you measure the height. You have to take some kind of ruler or, I don't know, some kind of digital equipment, and you're going to measure the tree height. With discrete data, those were just values that you count. Remember, the example I gave, if we were looking at how many students are in our class, that would be discrete, and uh, you would do a bar graph. So maybe you could have some bar graph where you have in workplace 11, how many kids are there, workplace 10, how many kids there are, and in calculus 12, how many kids there are. And then, you know, maybe there's this many in workplace, there's even more in workplace 10, and there's even more in calculus 12, and the bars don't touch each other. But if we were looking at the heights of different people in all those classes, we'd put them all into categories, and then the bars would look like this. All right, I think it will make more sense once we start doing this. So here we have an example of tree heights. Uh, so this on the right, the left hand side here, this is the number of trees. It just says trees, but I'm going to make it number of trees. And then here's the height. So first of all, do you see one thing about this graph that's not the greatest? One thing that, yeah, I think they could have done a better job. I'm not crazy about the scale down here. Yes, it goes 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 350, which is good, goes up by 50. But look at right at the start here, it starts at 100 more or less. So in my mind, they should either do the broken line thing and start it like that, or they should actually start at zero. And in which case, if they started at zero, the first bar wouldn't be until, I don't know, somewhere around here. You'd have like 50 would be around here, and then 100 would be around here. And really, the first bar should be here, and the whole thing should be shifted over a little bit. Not a huge deal, but, you know, if you're going to do something, do it right. You're not supposed to ask, just start at 100 there. So what's one thing that's not correct about this graph? Starts at 100. Uh, I guess to easily correct it, I could put a broken line right there. How many trees are between 150 centimeters and 200 centimeters? Well, between 150 and 200, that's this bar right here. So all we have to do is figure out how many trees are that. And if I go up to the top, I can see that this bar goes up to 30. So our answer is 30. There are 30 trees between 150 and 200. How about between 300 and 350? Well, 300 to 350 is this area here, right? This bar here represents 300 to 350. So where's that? Ooh, that's not easy. Here's the top, and it goes over to there. Uh, 10, 20, 15 would be right in the middle around there. So what do you think? 14, 13, I'm going to go 12. 
Do I know that for sure? No, but I think 12 is a pretty good estimate there. All right, how many trees were shorter than 300 centimeters? So shorter than 300 centimeters, I guess we have to count one, two, three, four of them here. So the first one here, uh, what would you say, this low one here, is that about four? Five would be halfway, but it's not quite there. So I would say four. So I'm going to go with four plus the next one's between 150 and 200. We already did that. It was 30, so we're going to add 30. The next one is between uh, 200 and 250. So that is this one right here, 200 and 250. And that looks a little more than halfway, so I'm going to say 26. It might be 27. Again, if I'm a little off, I apologize, but that's the thing about these graphs. It's hard to tell. And then shorter than 300, so we got to go all the way up to uh, 300. We still have this last one, this 250 to 300. Well, that one's right on the line. It's obviously exactly 50. So we're going to add all these up. Whoops, I'll add my 50. And we're going to add all those up. Hey, I'm going to add the 4 and the 26 first because that makes 30. And then 30 plus 30 is 60, and 60 plus 50 is 110. I think that's the easiest way to add those ones up. How many were taller than 180? OK, it has to be taller than 180. Where's 180? 180 is, well, there's 175 right here. So how are we going to do this? We know it's going to include all these, all these, all these, but how do we do it? We can't do this. This is one of the problems with histograms, right? If you want to know how many are more than 180, you need to know how many fall in this range from 180 to 200. But the answer isn't 30, right? You might say, well, look, it goes up to 30. The answer is 30. No, 30 is for the whole thing. We don't know how much of that 30 is more than 180 and how much is less than 180. In other words, we can't answer this. It's not possible. The only ones we can answer are when they have uh, intervals matching exactly the intervals that we're dealing with here. So that is unfortunate, but a true statement about histograms. All right, let's make one. But before we make it, I just want to introduce this idea of a frequency table because we're going to use this when we make it. A frequency table is a table that shows the number of items in each interval. So it's kind of an intermediate step. I have some data here. The first thing we're going to do is make a table that gets us our intervals and the numbers in each interval. And then we'll use the frequency table, right? The frequency table, this is what this is, a frequency table. We'll use the frequency table and make the actual histogram down here. All right, so 12 students, this isn't real, I just made it all up. I asked 12 students to measure how far away their houses were from King George Secondary. Here are the results. So six names here with their distance, six names here with their distance. The first thing we want to do is we want to figure out some intervals. So let's see, what's the short, smallest distance? Well, Jade is only 90 meters away from school. Wow, she's close. She must live across the street. Who's the most? Bella is 1,500. Poor Bella, big, big trip to school. Actually, I've made it so everyone's pretty close to school. This isn't very realistic. Uh, anyway, we want to go up to 1,500. So what you don't want to do is say, you know, 0, 1, 2. We need to do some intervals. Now, you also won't, don't want to go like, OK, the first interval is from 0 to 10. Because if we want to get up to 1,500, that would mean we'd have to have 150 intervals. You don't want to have that many intervals. I'd say the most number of intervals you want to have is around, what, 10? 10 bars is quite a bit still. So to do, if you did 10 bars, let's see, 1,500 divided by 10 would be 150. Why don't we go a little higher? Why don't we go up to 200 with each one? So why don't we make the first interval from 0 to 200 meters, and then from 200 to 400 meters, 400 to 600 meters, 600 to 800, 800 to 1,000, 1,000 to 1,200, 1,200 to 1,400, and 1,400 to 1,600. Look, it fits in my table perfectly. It's almost like I had this pre-planned. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, so now we need to count how many fall into each interval. So actually, you know, there's another way you can do this. Maybe I'll do this a different way. I'm going to add another, um, another column here. And uh, I'm actually going to move this over. The frequency, I'm going to move over to the last column, column here. And this middle column, I'm going to call the tally. 
T-A-L-L-Y. So you're just going to make marks here for which which um, interval each thing falls into. So for example, Cameron, 380. So check, we're going to do that one right now. 380 falls where? Right here, between 200 and 400. So I'm going to put a tally, a, a tally mark right there. Okay, um, I'm going to go over to Tony. 450. Well, 450 is between 400 and 600. Tally mark right there. Cat, 200. All right, we better pause here a second. 200, we have a problem. Does it go here because it's 0 to 200? Or does it go here because it's 200 to 400? And I'm going to put an important point here. I should have already had this. Each bar includes the lower boundary, but not the upper boundary. So for example, this fir first interval goes from 0 up to 200, but not including 200. This one goes from 200, including 200, up to 400, but not including 400. So for this 200, does not go into the, uh, the, the first interval here. It goes into the second one. Okay, next one, Lara, 1,100. That would go right here between 1,000 and 1,200. 1,500 would go in the last one, between 1,400 and 1,600. 750, 600 to 800. Uh, 600. So again, be careful. It goes in the lower, uh, sorry, it goes in the upper one. This is from 400 to 600, not including 600. So then this is from 600, including 600, not up to 800. So that goes here. 700 would go in the same one. 1,200. Again, it goes in the upper one, right? Because this is from 1,000 inclusive, not including 1,200. This one includes 1,200. 800, again, goes in the top one. This one does not include 800. This one does, so it goes there. 900, well, that also goes there. And Jade's 90 goes way down here. And that's it. So now what you do for frequency, you just add them up. Well, I've got one here, two to uh, tally marks there. One, three, two, one, one, one. And we're good to go. We can make our uh, histogram now. So not much room for a title, but I'll squeeze something in. Okay, we actually only need to have a total, the most it goes up to is three. It's not very high, so it's going to be a very short histogram. Maybe I'll even move this down. Uh, okay, so on the left-hand side, we're going to have the frequency. Frequency, and as I said, it's only going up to three. Maybe I'll go one, skip one, skip two, skip three. That's as high as it's going. On the bottom, we're going to have uh, our distance. And remember, this is in meters. So now we have to do our interval. The first interval is from 0 to 200, right? So it goes 0 to 200. The next one's 200 to 400, up to 600, 800, 1,000, 1,200, 1,400, 1,600. Uh, I know we don't have anything up to 1,600, but you don't want to do something weird and have like 200, 400, 600, 800, 1,000. Whoa, that looks like 100. 1,000, 1,200, 1,400, 1,500. You wouldn't want to do that because then you've been going up by 200 and then suddenly 100 here. So make sure you go up by the same amount. Okay, how many were in the first one? One. So we're going to make a bar here at one. The next one, I believe, was two. Yes, two. So our bar will look like this. After that, it went back to one and then to three. So I'm going to do them both. There's the one. There's the three. Okay, what comes after that? Two, one, one, one. There's the two. Now, you could just draw this like that, that's fine, or you can go one, one, one. This is probably better, actually, do it like this. All right, I know you love them colored in. Okay, there you go. We've done it. Made a beautiful histogram. Uh, how satisfying. You can either do it like that, or if you want, you could also make it so you can still see the individual bars. Uh, it's totally up to you. I kind of prefer this, but, you know, your choice, everyone. All right, that's histograms. Hope that makes sense. See ya. Bye.